Hey y'all, I'm Tammy, and this is Collard Valley Cooks. Today we're making something that's just over the top delicious, and that's homemade cream puffs, stuffed with creamy vanilla filling and dipped in chocolate. Let's get started. I have always wanted to make cream puffs, and they're pretty simple. I don't know why I hadn't never done it. But anyway, you're just going to use a half cup of butter, which is a stick. And you're going to bring it to a rapid boil with a cup of water. So the first thing I'm going to do is let that melt. Then we're going to add the water, get it to boiling. Then after you do that, you add a cup of sifted flour to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the flour into my sifter. We're going to add a little salt to it. And there's salt in my butter as well, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of salt in here. Doing good. Is that thing on there right? It don't look like it, does it? I mean, I just cleaned the stove, so it's probably just acting a little weird. I may need to brush them off with a wire brush. Whenever your um, elements, if they ever start showing gold instead of blue when you're cooking, Lord, I turned the wrong knob. See, it's not doing as much now. But you can brush, brush it good with a brush, take these top parts off, and it'll get rid of a lot of that. Lots of times, that's all you need to do. Okay, cream puffs. Everybody loves them. I know they do in my family. You can eat them like an eclair and put chocolate on the top or make them just with cream in them, and they're so good. And almost everybody buys them at Christmas time, but they get them out of the freezer section. So I'm going to show you how quick you can make them at home today. It's going to be simple and easy, and y'all are going to be quite shocked at how fast they come together. You know, I've never made them, but... I just looked at this recipe and it looks so simple. I told Chris, we're making some today. We're going to add a cup of water to that butter. I'm going to put a lid on it and it's going to come to a rapid boil. Okay. Once it gets to a nice rapid boil, we're going to sift in our flour. Now, some people would sift their flour in something else and just add it. I'm probably just going to sift it in there. Then you're going to use um, something and beat it until it comes away from the sides of the pot. And I'm going to use this nice bread dough whisk when I get to that point. All we got to do is wait on this to come to a nice boil. It looks like it's already getting there. Look at there, look at there. Quick, quick. Especially with a lid. Now, I want it to be all the way across boiling. All the way across boiling. Get together. Okay. Looks pretty nice to me. Pretty nice to me. Here we go. Cup of plain flour with a little bit of salt because salt's in my butter as well. And now we're just going to stir it with this dough whisk. And you're supposed to beat it until it forms a ball. And we're going to come back over here with it. Because I would imagine the cooler it gets, then the more it's going to form the ball. All right, I'm going to use a spoon. Spurtle. Now you're going to add your eggs one at a time.
This is my first time. Y'all, I have lymphedema in my arm. I don't have enough strength in my arm just to beat this by myself. And I've tried using different utensils, and I'm just going to use a mixer. And be done with it. You're going to add each egg until it starts getting sticky again. See how it turns sticky again? So you're going to mix it in there. Not while it looks still separate like that, but you got to stir it good until it's sticky. Just like that. That'll be good. That looks like bread dough. Trying to get it to let go. Perfect consistency now for dropping it. I'm gonna spray this. It's a little quarter cup scoop, and uh, you can use a. You're gonna put these two inches apart on a cookie sheet, and you can use a piping bag if you want to. But I know everybody can scoop them out, and not everybody can pop them. So this is how we're going to make them today. And then we're going to make some delicious cream to fill them with. And if you want them little, like the ones you buy in the store, you could use one of those really large... Um, cookie scoops or you know a smaller scoop I think I got a little more in some of these than others grab some from that one it's a real pretty dough the consistency looks beautiful so I think we did it right y'all even if it did take a minute to figure it out. You know what? That's all right. When you get in the kitchen, sometimes it just takes a minute to figure stuff out. I'm borrowing, borrowing a couple. This one's really little. But we'll just let him be a little one. Or I might could scrape out enough if I try hard enough. If I get me a little thing to make that one just a little bit bigger. Yeah. Wonder if you could decorate them at all to make them look like they got design on them. Now, we're going to make a delicious filling to go in them. All right, girls, these are not for you. Boy, these are pretty, y'all. Now, that was an easy dessert. It rose the highest. Look at that. Just so pretty. I can pull this off and eat it. This little piece for me. All right, now we're going to let them cool all the way down. I'm going to pull them off this uh, pan. You pull this over here. And let them slide off onto the cooling rack. Okie dokie. This is easy. You use a cup of milk. One container of vanilla instant pudding, a small 3.4 ounce. You put your pudding in the cup of milk first and you mix that up. You do it at a low speed so we don't splatter everything. Okay. 
And now you're going to add two cups of whipping cream. This is heavy whipping cream. One, two. It's nice to mix this up in this four cup measuring cup because then you don't have to get anything dirty but one thing. Now, of course, I got to turn it up in a minute, y'all, but I just want it to get a little bit thick before I don't want to splatter it. It's pretty deep on my mixer, so it shouldn't splatter too easy. Now, you don't want to over whip it, but you're going to check it. It's not quite at a stiff peak yet. Um, you don't want to over whip it. Just a couple seconds more. That's it. Very creamy and delicious for a cream puff. And Chris has decided, mmm, that's good, that he wants to whip his And Chris has decided he wants me to dip them in chocolate, like an eclair. Mmm! Okay, we're going to heat up some chocolate wafers. I got these at Michael's the other day while I was there. They had a coupon that everything you put in the bag and bought was 25% off. So I loaded up on stuff I needed. Got me some chocolate and vanilla. So we're going to put this in the microwave and melt it. And if you've ever bought chocolate wafers... What I like about them compared to real chocolate is they're easier to melt. They are thinner when you melt it, so you can dip it easier, okay? And they're good. They taste good. Now, I'm going to fill these. And I'm going to grab me a piece of parchment. Because if you'll notice, the tip I'm going to fill these with is long and slender. And I actually don't have a piping bag this would fit in. Now, I put that on 30 seconds to start with. And the next time I heat them, I'm going to put them on melt instead of regular. Some of y'all might have a microwave that's so powerful. If you put it on 30 seconds, you'd be in trouble and it'd burn already. So if you want to, just go ahead and use your melt or soften setting. I have on this microwave a melt and soften, and there's a butter, a chocolate, ice cream, and cheese for cream cheese, which is really nice. And I'm going to grab me. Whoops. Lord, I got me enough parchment then, didn't I? So I'm going to make me a popping bag, and I'm making it skinny at the bottom because this is skinny. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this piping bag. I like to use my large spatula when I'm using the icing. And we're just going to fill this like that. If you don't have um, piping stuff and you don't know how to make one like this, you can always go to Michael's or wherever you go, Joann's, Michael's. Where's another one? What's the name of that other one, Chris? Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Walmart may have a field tip. I don't know, but it's not impossible. Now I'm going to push that down in there out of my way. And we're going to cut the end of this off so that'll stick out. Got to be careful not cut it off too big, though. Okay. 
That looks good. All right. Let's check on our chocolate. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to take your cream puff and you're going to put your tip in it as far as you can and squeeze. And I'm going to do the other side too. So it'll have plenty in there. You just kind of pull it out as it feels, okay? Just kind of pull it out so we don't squeeze it out the other side like I just did. You'll get the hang of it about the time you're finished. This one's big and fat, so I kind of went sideways. Back and forth. A little bit on that side and a little bit on this side. And now I got lots of it. So you know what I might do? I might make another um, recipe of these tomorrow. Small ones and fill them with this and put them in my freezer and that way I can just take them out the next time I have a function and I'll have a dessert because I'm not throwing this away, it tastes too good. And we're just gonna fill ours and dip them in chocolate. You're just gonna take it, flip it upside down, dunk it, just like that. Dunk it. Shake it. Dunk it and shake it. Whoops, I got cream coming out the bottom of this one. Uh-oh, I dropped it. That was just going to have to have a lot on it. I'll turn around so y'all can see it. Do you want to taste one without the chocolate? I can. This one's really pretty. I'll take the prettiest ones and not put chocolate on them. These three right here. What do you think? You think they're the prettiest? We're gonna see how this looks. I'm just gonna to try to open it and see what happens. And remember, these are still warm. Well, they're not warm, but they haven't cooled all the way. That looks good, don't it? Let me get a bite. Mm -mm -mm. That's the creamiest cream puff I've ever had. I love the feeling too. And remember y'all, the chocolate is really rich. But remember down here in the south, to tell you the truth, I've never known anybody to make these. But I know y'all make them a lot in the northern states because my friend that visited me told me y'all do. Eat them and y'all have them in a lot of the areas up there that you go. So y'all probably had a fresh one. And... This is the first time I've ever had a fresh one. Let me rinse my hand off. Y'all, I had to taste these too because I've never had one that's homemade either. Um, and I got to tell you, I mean, that's good. The, if you want the sweeter, get the chocolate. The puff pastry is so eggy. It has such an egg flavor to it that it really does taste like an egg custard pie. It's really good. That's the flavor. Delicious. Because they do taste so much like egg custard, y'all, I think it would be so good to put a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg in the, the cream. Y'all, if you've ever had one like that, tell us. But I want you to see how pretty the bread is inside of it. And the next time I make... I might actually stuff some at the very end, mix in a little cinnamon and nutmeg in one. See you next time.